G'day YouTubers, Pro Muso here. Today I'm going to go through some pentatonic extensions. Not the five caged positions, just two positions that you need to use. All right, bugger the intro today, we're just going to go straight into it. Pentatonic extensions. So this is derived from the cage system, but simplified down into just two simple scales you need for major and minor pentatonic. All right, so first things first, we need to know what notes we're playing, or more importantly, what notes we're going to start the scales on. Okay, and for this, I'm only going to be using the E and the A strings, right, as anchor points. You don't need to know anything else. So when I first learned what the notes were in, in Western music, very, very simple explanation for me was that if we look at the alphabet, we have notes A through to G with sharps and or flats in between every single one of them, except for between B and C and E and F, right? And the way I would remember it would be before Christ or electronic fuel. Everything else has a sharp or it's relative flat in between the notes. So if we put that to use, everything between E and F and B and C has no sharps or flats. Everything else does. So, so you may have heard the terms half steps and whole steps or tones and semitones. So a whole step is basically two notes up. A half step is basically chromatic, which is just the very next one. So only one step up. So a whole step, if I'm in G, whole step would be two notes up. A half step would be one note up, okay? So let's look at the notes on the E string. Open is E. Next note up. What is the next note up? Well, it's F because there's no sharp between E and F, electronic fuel. So the very next note up has to be an F. If we go up another one, it's F sharp. G, G sharp, A, A sharp or B flat, which is commonly known as. B, before Christ. So, so in other words, there's, there's no sharps between E and F and B and C, all right? E, F, B and C. So really, all you gotta do is go up the notes of the alphabet from A to G, and if it doesn't fall before E and F or B and C, there's a sharp between it. It's as simple as that. So really for playing basic to intermediate guitar, you really only need to know the notes on the frets on these first two strings, the top two strings, right? On your E and your A to work it out, right? So um, let's say I wanna play a bar chord at, at, at uh, B flat. So I know that open, that's a, that's an E, right? If I bar it there, the whole chord becomes a, an F. E, F, F sharp, G. And what I'm looking here is my first finger on that. So I know that um, on that third fret, if I base it off the top string, I'm basing a G, either a G chord, a G scale, Uh, or, or a, a G arpeggio, or a G, uh, it could be a G minor. Still a G, right? Still a G, doesn't change it, whatever, it's a G, right? So what I would suggest is that you learn all of the notes, at least all of the notes where these markers are on the frets, because you can you don't necessarily have to go, well, what's a, what's a D chord? Oh, and then you've got to count all the, all, all the way up to find a D chord. You can use these markers, which are really handy. So I know the first marker here on there is always a G, all right? That's a G. I know that this one here is an A, right? I know that the next one is a B, right? This one here is a C sharp. And that one is the octave, D. So if I know where all those are, 
let's say I want to get a, a B flat. Okay, well, I know that one's a B, so I quickly go down to my B flat. And I know without having to count up chromatically. And if you do the same thing on the A string, it's going to cover all notes. So, so get that in your head first. So basically, know what all the, what the open strings are. We already know them. A, sorry, E and A. Well, let's know what they are at the third fret here at this first marker. Well, that's G. And what's this one? Count it up. A, A sharp, B, C. Okay, well then I know that um, one string over that on the same fret, if that's a G, that's a C. Okay, well so now I know E, A, I know G, C, right? I know that the second dot is A on the first string and D on the second string. You don't have to you don't have to look at the sharps and the flats, you just look at these you look at these markers, alright? So if I if if I want to play an E So what I'm looking at there is I'm I'm looking at the one, two, third marker on the second string, on the A string, I know that's an E. And this is also an E, right? So they're my anchor points, right? Let's say you're playing a, a you're playing a song, you're playing a song in E. You want a different sound? Okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to go. Okay, I'll go up there and play a, a bar chord there because I'm using that anchor point for my chord. All right. Now, so that's kind of another lesson, but I want to, I want you to get these anchor points in your mind so you know where the starting point of these pentatonic scales are going to be. All right, so let's say we've got a song in the key of G. It's just a basic song, right? Okay, and I want to play a solo over that, right? Well, what am I thinking? What do I do? Okay, well, I know that the first fret and the first marker on the top string, the E string, is a G note. So that's my root note, right? Now, with these extensions, I'm not going through the cage system, although they're part of the cage system. I'm just going to give you one scale for this string. Okay, so we start on the G. So if we're playing a G, we start on the G, right? And then we move up two frets to the A, right? And then we slide up another two frets, all right? So... And then for the next three strings on the same fret position, we go up two notes. So we've got... And we're in the same position here. We go up two, up another two. All right. So we've got... Let's go back down. Now, the beauty of, of this these extensions is that it allows you a bunch of positions in which to slide in and out of which sounds cool right and also places to bend so we start here and this is I might remind you this is when we're in a major key right we're in G major it does change for minor and I'll show you whoa do you hear that it's a jet going over um, it does change for minor, but that's the only change, okay? So we've got... And then we've got another slide there, so we've got... Now between all of these changes, it's always two frets, right? Two frets, two, 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 two.
right? That's all pentatonic major. It's the same as it's the same as your um. You listen to the difference between that though. Like if you're playing the cage system, you go. What sounds better, that or this? Right, you've got a few slides in there. It already becomes musical and a little bit more melodic. So we've got up two, slide, so two frets, slide, two frets, two frets, slide, two frets. Right? And once it gets to here and we come up to this nasty old B string, it changes, right? So we've got everything's uniform. And then we just go down one fret. So we come we come up to here. So the next note, because these tune these strings are tuned differently from the B string, we've got to compensate. So we just go back the one fret. All right, and up to there. All right, so it's. All right, so just get that under your fingers. It's the only scale you need for the major. any combinations of stuff, right? Right? So you've got a bend there. So you've got slide here. Two frets. Two frets. Then you've got a bend you can use, right? Instead of going... Going up to there, you can use this note to bend. So we've got. Right? So already we've got things to use instead of just learning, instead of just knowing all five different cage scales. This is, a, this is the perfect extension for that. So it's really just one scale. frets two frets next string back down two frets two frets up two frets up so you got a little box there you can look at this little box here we've got for, for half of the strings we've got one box of two frets right and a whole so you can think of it like that with your your root note we slide up and we're into this box. Doesn't change for three strings. Up two, up two, up two. Get that in your head, right? Major starts there. We slide up into the box. Get that into your head first before you even move on. So it cements it in your mind. Okay, so we've got the box. And you'll see the box. I'll, I'll put the box up, right? So there's the box, that's that's easy, right? Once we get to the third string on the box, to the top of that, we just slide it up another two frets and copy again. Right, so we've got same pattern. And then we go to the B string, which is the only difference in the whole scale, right? So we've got, right? And then we just go up two frets from there. And we can even bend this one. Right? And 
we can also go if we bend this two frets and then we hit this one directly above it see how useful that scale is so now we're using all strings So if we've got a song, let's put a little loop on here. So I'm just using different combinations of just different combinations of that um, scale. Now it's always if it's a major scale that won't work under if it's a minor key, but that will always work in a major key if you know what the root of the song is. So if the song is in G, we know off our string here that's a G note, so that's the start of our scale. Slide up into the box, slide up into the next little bit, we go up the one fret, this is just G and D. Use our bends. Right. right, so let's say we change the key, right? We're in F now. And for anything that's diatonic to F, that scale's going to work, right? Even if we play minor chords in it, right? So if we've got something like got an F there, D minor there, B flat, and a C. Now they're all within the key of F. So what happens if I do a loop of that and then I play the, the extension? Right, so here we've got the F. There's our root note. We slide up into the box.
right? I'm just going through that whole extension, nothing else. I'm not playing any major scale stuff. I'm just playing the major pentatonic, all right? I mean, you'll get to learn, you can pretty much play any note within that, but you'll get to hear when you hear the progressions, which notes work best, because some of them won't really resolve. They won't quite sound right. They won't sound as bad as a really note, a bum note out of key, but they're just not going to sound quite right. But you will get used to that, and you'll get used to that within learning the pattern. All right? Could just you could just go straight up and down it to get it in your head because they're cool slides I'm just using those notes of that extension, nothing else. Now, there are times where it will get a bit cramped, right? If you're playing that position, and it's going to take you right up here, right? For example, if I'm playing a song in D, well, I'll, I know that I know that that's a D up there, so I would have to start there. And so I'm already a fair way up the guitar neck, right? I could do it. But it is a, a long way up, all right? So what do we do then? We go, we go on to the A string, and we take the root or the anchor point from the A string. So basically, whichever note you find on these two strings that is within the key that you want to play, that is lowest, is probably going to be the best one, at least to start the, the lick on. Right, because you're going to be nice and low, and it's going to give you room to move up here. So we're, let's say we're in D, right? We want to play a song in D, okay? A solo over D. So we've got, we find the D note, okay? Right now, you should probably already know that the, you know, on the first marker, on the A string, is a C, right? And the second one is a D. And after a while, you'll get to go, okay, I know where the D is. Bang, straight there. And that's just a case of memorizing it. And use these markers because they they really help dissect all the sharps and the flats. Really, because there's only one sharp on that. The rest, the rest are all, um, well, that's, that's G and C. That's, that's A and D. Right, that's B and E, right? And it's not till we get up to here where we get to the sharp, the C sharp and an F sharp, right? So if, even if you forget the F sharp, just learn them off these three, right? That's really only six notes to know where they are. Okay, what do I want to be? Okay, I want to, I want to see what. It, Okay, I want to know, I, I, I want a G sharp. Okay, well, it's between these two. I know that's a G, so straight away I can go, well, that's a G sharp. Let's play a song in G sharp. So get them under your, get them in your head. Very, 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 very important. Once you've got them, you can link everything else off it. I mean everything. So back to D. We want to play a song in D major. First thing I'm thinking is, okay, where are my anchor points for a D major solo to start? Okay, well, I know straight away it's it's right there because the other D is all the way up here. I don't really want to start it there. I want to start it down here because I've got more room to 
go up the neck. And I've still got room to go down the neck here. So, same as on the first string, exactly the same. We start there, up two frets, slide up into the box. Exactly the same, right? Exactly the same pattern. And we slide up from the box, right? Top of that box, that, that three string box there, that's exactly the same as from the first string, but now we're in D. We slide up there, and instead of going up two strings, we'll, we're already at the B there, so once we're at that B string, we've got to compensate again. So we just go down one fret, right? That's the whole thing. Compensate with that one fret change. We can even bend that one. So it's exactly the same as, as when we were in G. Remember we bent that? Well, it's the same here. But we're bending it on the bottom string. So it's exactly the same pattern, right? And it's off. So if I did it up here, it'd be exactly the same. Same notes, you just got more of them up here, but you know, you're running out of room. So when we were in G, we're in D now. It's exactly the same thing. It's just we're starting a string higher, so we've got one less string to use. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Just go through that scale. That's one scale that you've got to learn, as opposed to five different shapes from the cage system. You've just got one extended shape that you need to know. Now, when we're playing with minor chords, it's different, right? So when we're playing minors, we start on the same note. Right, so I'm back in G now. I'm playing a G minor. Right, so if a song is in G minor, then we still want to start on the G note because it's not major or minor, it's just one note. And instead of going up like we did, we're going to go back, right? Back two frets. Instead of up two frets, we start with our ring finger on the root instead of our first finger, right? And that's a, and that's a good way. That's a good way to do it. As soon as you do that, you're like, okay, I feel I know I'm in minor now. Here I'm in major because I know I'm ready to slide up. When I'm minor, you can hear that's minor, right? So now I'm in minor. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to use my ring finger instead of my first finger, my ring finger, and that's going to sort of hover me over these two frets. Right? Which is the start of the scale for the minor, okay? So we go back two frets. And then we're in that little pattern of these two strings. It's that little, little box of two frets. But that's the root. And even when you get to this one here, you can bend it, right? So we've already got a bend. 
right? Just with those two strings. And when we get to here, we slide up another two frets. And we've got another three box set, which is exactly the same. So once we go, once we slide up from the second string, not like from the first, not, not straight away on the first string, but we slide up on the second string and then we're into that box shape. We've got the, like I said, half the strings. I mean, half of the scale is filled up with that simple pattern. minor we start with our ring finger we can go back just to know that we're in that two fret box slide up for the next three strings we've even got a bend here when we get to here we slide up another two just like we did before with the major one And then another two, we compensate there with the B. And instead of bending that one, we go all the way up another two. And then we can bend the top one. I'll go through that again. And I'll, and I'll put the box up here. Up to compensate one fret difference there between that that note and that note, and then another two, another little box of two, like this, and we can bend at the top there. We can slide down into the box there. it off with the root right so we've got slide slide bend <laughs> we can even slide up to the G song in G minor, right? Uh, well, let's do a, a trickier key, right? Let's say B flat minor, right? Where do we go? We go up to the B, right? We flatten the B. We know that's a B, so we flatten it. We play the minor chord. We know that's a minor. We start with our ring finger. We go down into this two string box set. I'm not looking at the notes. All I'm looking at is that starting note. And then I'm looking at the pattern. Same pattern. Up three box set. I get to there. I go up another two frets. Compensate. Another two frets for both those strings. Come back down. Slide into the box. Slide back down to the root. To be honest, I don't even know what notes I'm playing. I just know that's a B flat, right? Alright. Now the same goes for the second string. Let's say we got a song in C minor. Right? Well, I could play it from here. I could. There's a C minor there. I could play it. I'm just going over that. Or I could play it from here. I'm doing exactly the same thing, but starting on the second string. See, there's that two box set. But now my root is here on the C, the anchor point. All right. Now I slide up. 
Now the difference here is there's no three box set because we're already at the B string, right? So we've got to compensate by just going up one fret. Right? And then we can bend. I'll keep this simple. We can bend this one here. So there's our C minor, right? It's the same start as from the E string one. So we've got this two box set here. Little box of two. Another little box of two. Two frets up. And then we compensate, we're up one fret. And then we've got a bend there. We can do that thing again. That's the first position again. I went up to the first position, so I can do either. So if I know that that's a C, if that's a C, that's a C there. So I've got my first position. I've got the option to play there. Or I can play here. Same notes. Exact same notes, different positioning, and just that's just two that you got to learn for major and minor. I really hope that helps. Just get those shapes in your mind, right? Because um, you know the cage system has got five different sort of shapes, and really most musos only use a couple of those. And that extension that I've just shown you is 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 pretty much where they use them. Okay. Um, I mean, it is nice to know all positions and, and, and all major scale notes within those, but that, that comes a bit later. Just get those under your fingers first. And then once you learn the, the rest of the major scale notes, you'll be able to put more notes to the, the patterns that you already know. You won't even have to know what notes they are, except for the anchor notes, the root notes, the notes you start on. Anyway, I hope I haven't done many um, guitar type tutorials like this. So um, let me know if, if the way I explain it helps. I hope it does. Um, I think it's a better way, at least if you want to get playing melodically quicker than learning all five positions of the cage scale, uh, because it is a more melodic way to play. And it keep you interested too because it sounds better. You've got slides and bends within one scale. Uh, so I hope that helps, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm out.